Jesus, a hand clap of praise and thanksgiving. Can we do that? Come on, if he's ever done anything for you, if he's ever touched your life, would you praise him right now? Hallelujah. Would you praise him right now? God's so good. Hallelujah. Just lay it on that speaker. Amen. God is so good. God, I give you glory. I give you thanksgiving for everything you've done in my life. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I am so honored and excited to be standing before you today. Amen. So, so honored and excited. I couldn't think of a better place in the world to be after six months off of a God journey that I'm going to talk to you a little bit about. My first Sunday to be back ministering in a church. And I'm excited that God allowed that to be right here in LaRanger, Louisiana. Amen. Amen. God is just so amazing. I want to take just a moment and, and thank Pastor and Sister Jenkins for this privilege. Had several churches wanting to know if I could let their church be the first church that I come to. And I started telling my friends, everybody can't be first. I'm going to need somebody to be the second and the third. I mean, but I was thinking this morning after visiting with Brother Jenkins last night, one of my prayers that I pray is, God, I pray your purity, your purpose, your presence, and your power. It's just a little simple prayer that I pray. But that first word, purity, is so important. I want the pureness of God's presence, not for the wrong motives. And I was thinking this morning, I don't believe that I know a more pure spirit than Pastor Denny Jenkins. Pure spirit for God and the things of God and the kingdom of God. And it's through that pure spirit and your pure spirit that God's doing great things here in LaRanger. For those of you that were part of the church plant that came from the Pentecostals of Lee Road, I sat here this morning worshiping and looked out and the impression came over me so strong. You're not a daughter church anymore. I don't know how they label you. But for those of you that may be guests or friends, sometimes a church will gain in strength and then they will help start another church. And that's kind of the mother church and a daughter church. You're not a daughter church anymore. I assisted at the Pentecostals of Lee Road at the end of the 1900s and into uh, the 2000s, somewhere there for three or four years. And when I looked out this morning, I said, this is the same worship, strength, power, and presence that I used to feel Amen. Look what God is doing and has done in LaRanja, Louisiana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's incredible to see all of you, so many dear friends. Brother and Sister Smith, we go way back. Our families, I went and hugged them and talked to them for a moment. I love you all so much. And then I have cousins here today, Kevin and Kathy Kendrick. Love you all. Thanks for your support and friendship so much. And uh, Kevin checked on me and kept me going sending me dear pictures and all kind of stuff when i was sick in the hospital thank you and my my dear scarlet where's here scarlet hey he man come to see me and and loves on me so much and i thank god for family just before i got sick my mom passed and just realized how special family is hey man i thank god for my family being here today I'm just going to talk minister for a while today, and I hope, hope that's okay, but God's going to do some beautiful things, some powerful things in, in this house. Amen. So I just want us to take a moment. might be a little different today because I don't have a text or a title. I'm just going to talk from my heart. If you want a text, it would be from Revelation 12, 11, where it said they overcame him by the word of their testimony. I got a testimony, and I'm about to share it. Amen. Amen. Could we just bow our heads and pray that God would move across this room, Lord, to this church family, to guests and friends from across this community, from folks here in places of strength, and some may be here today in places of weaknesses. Amen. Those here, Lord Jesus, amen, throughout the spectrum of life with needs, Lord, with prayers, with their hearts bringing into your presence, we invite your presence. We invite your glory. We invite the anointing of the Lord to come in this house. 
We give you all glory. Let your perfect will be done in this room in the next little while. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless and you may be seated. Thank you to this church. Your pastor has let me know and several of you through different contacts that you have prayed for us much in these last um, six months and help support our family. God has provided so beautifully and so miraculously um, to, to our family to care for us during this time. And this church has been a part of that. And, and I thank God. I, I have seen the beautiful side of the body of Christ and friends loving on us during our time of need. So I say thank you. I want to take you at the beginning i just stop and say, y all, y all, like, three weeks ago, I couldn't have even been standing here like this. I'd have had to have a stool. I just, I'm, I just kind of got me excited right there. Amen. Just, just the journey that God has taken us on and what's happening. But I want to begin by something that happened more towards the end after my three hospital stays and my third rehab hospital stay. Something that happened but to open our hearts and set the stage. For what God wants to do today. I, um, I normally stay clean shaven every once in a while at the deer camp. I may not shave for a week or two, but the most of the time. I, but during my sickness, just out of, uh, you know, there was too much going on and shaving wasn't part of the plan. I grew a wonderful snow white beard that uh, Kenny Rogers would, would have been jealous of. Santa Claus, it, it was solid, man, and snow white and and uh, when I started getting to feeling better, I said, you know what, I'm feeling better. I'm ready to, I'm ready to, I'm ready to clean up. I'm ready to, to shave. And so uh, I, I, because I had to be on blood thinners at that time, I didn't want to shave with a razor, and, and I didn't have an electric razor. But I was in a rehab hospital, and, and in the big therapy room, they had a beard trimmer, and they had electric razors, and they use it as part of therapy, helping people learn to take care of themselves. And they said, oh, we'll set you up in the corner. We'll get you a mirror. And you can, you can go in there and, and, and just, so there's probably 10 or 12 therapists, 10 or 12 patients, 20 or 30 people in the room exercising, doing different things across the room. And here I am in the corner, put a hospital gown on me so we can get the hair all over my clothes. And boy, I went, I went, to, I went, to, went to trimming and shaving. And I said, you know, I don't have this opportunity much, so I'm going to have a little fun. And, uh, and so I went from a full beard to a trim beard and took a selfie. I thought that was pretty cool. And I said, you know, I've never had a goatee. I'm fixing to have one. And uh, so I shaved myself down to a goatee, and I took me a picture of that. And, uh, and I said, you know, I've never had a mustache with a soul patch, but I'm fixing to. And, and so I did that and, and just having a little fun in the corner. And, and uh, while I was doing that, a lady that I hadn't met, I think I'd waved at her, and we were both in wheelchairs. She had a broke leg and a broke arm. And, and uh, she come rolling by. And uh, she, she was just bored, I guess, because her appointment for her therapy wasn't until 11. But instead of staying in her room, she rolled by. And, and, and so she came in the corner. She said, you look like you're having fun. I said, I am. This, this is fun. And, uh, and she said, well, what do you do? So instead of answering her, I said, well, you tell me. What do you think I do? She guessed about five things, but not one of them was a preacher. <laughs> And, and, and after I noticed she was struggling, I said, well, somebody yesterday wanted to know if I was an attorney. And she said, well, are you? I said, no, I'm a preacher. And her smile turned into a heavy, heavy face. She said, preacher, would you pray for me? She said, my family's just going through it. And I worry so much about what I face when I get out. It's just a tough situation. Would you pray for me? And the man that was sitting closest doing his therapy he leaned over and said prayer is a powerful thing I said you're right and I said ma'am what room are you in she told me and I said well after my therapy and your therapy this afternoon I'll roll over to your room and and we'll pray together and she kept sitting there saying prayer is powerful so we talked a little bit and I, all phases of my shaving I looked up and she never left I got finished shaving at 10.35, and I said, what time is your therapy? She said, 11. 
we're in a corner, everybody's so busy, nobody's paying attention, just that one person kind of close to us doing their exercises and the, the therapist, and I said, uh, you know what, let's not wait till this afternoon, we, we can just pray right here. And I reached out and took her hand and didn't make a show of things, didn't try to holler so everybody would hear us praying. I just started praying quietly. After about five, three to five minutes, I opened my eyes because I thought I'd prayed a pretty good prayer and I thought we had prayed a good prayer. And I was about to say amen. But when I looked up, tears were dripping off her chin. Her little head was going back and forth. And she didn't want to stop praying. So I said, mm, it's on now. And I'm, oh, I forgot to tell you one point. At one point in the conversation about prayer, she said, oh, preacher, I just need a touch of the Holy Ghost. When she said ghost instead of spirit, I, it, it, I knew something good's about to happen. If, if you call it the Holy Ghost, you you ready for something to happen. So I closed my eyes and I kept on praying. After about eight or ten minutes, I felt the spirit so strong. I said, you know, I'm just going to pray in the spirit for a little while. So I felt it and I prayed in tongues again, not loud. Just praying quietly. I looked up, my little head just moving, holding on with both of her hands. And just kept on praying. I looked at the clock, and now it's a quarter till. Just kept on praying. I opened my eyes again, and right there in the therapy room, God baptized that lady. I don't know her full story, but God baptized that lady with the Holy Ghost, a lady who was hurting, a lady who had needs in her life, right in the corner of a therapy room. Amen. She began to speak in a beautiful heavenly language as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. As she, shield, she yielded her life and her, her body to the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And God just baptized her beautifully, and we prayed till two minutes till 11. And then I heard a therapist saying, as I, I said, you got therapy, and I got to go to my room for a moment. And as I was rolling out, I heard therapist saying, you look different. You look different. She transferred to a different facility to the next morning. But God bless that lady. I told you that to tell you this. That's all it takes for God to work in your life. If you're here today and you would love the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's just God's spirit moving on the inside, living in your mind, living in your heart. All you have to do is start telling him, I need the Holy Ghost today. I need something from heaven today. If you're here with a need in your physical body, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, my Jesus can touch your body. My Jesus can heal in an instant time or layer upon layer. God's power is in this room to work. Hallelujah. All that it takes. All that it takes is for lives, minds, hearts just to begin to say, Jesus, I need you so much. I need you so much. The beginning of my sickness, August the 28th was a Monday this past year. Prior to that, the last few weeks before that, I'd been in a long revival that was Sundays and Wednesdays, but I was home on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday, until midday Saturday when I would drive. And, and I was working some out in the yard and uh, cleaning the hedgerows and shrubs and trees. Had a lot of vines, and I was just clipping and putting piles up at the street. And I like to work out in the yard in the summertime at the end of the day. Sometimes I... After even darkness is set, I can barely see my hand in front of my face, but at least it's three, to deg three degrees cooler, you know. And, and uh, that's when the mosquitoes are most active. And one infected with the West Nile obviously bit me. I began feeling weak at the end of a week, but I still went to that church and preached on Sunday morning and Sunday night in Bossier City. And, uh, and God moved, and, and the revival closed, and, and I was so achy. But I knew I had to get home, and starting that next morning, on Monday morning, I, I did not get out of bed for that entire week, and my body just ached. I was just hurting. Didn't have fever yet, wasn't sick to my stomach or nauseated yet, but just achy and hurting. But on that Monday, I was reminded of an old song, and I um, downloaded this song, and I... I I would play it in my 
laying in my bed on, on my little cell phone, laying on the pillow beside me. It became to me, I, 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 I wondered, God, why am I playing this song and just weeping, playing it five and ten times in a row? Little did I know for the next few weeks it would become my anchor. That God used a song. He can use a scripture. He can use a word. He can use a song. Let me just encourage you. When God gives you a word, hold on to it. When God gives you a song or something like that, hold on to it. Amen. But it's, it's kind of the same attitude as Christine had in that therapy room. I just, I just need you, Jesus. And I downloaded it and played it, and it, it became so dear to me. I've asked Sister Michelle just to take a moment. We won't stay here too long, but a simple course, if you know it, you can sing along. If not, listen to it and let this be our spirit today. God, where would I be without your grace? Would you listen for just a moment? Where would I be without you only know? I'm glad you see through eyes of love. A hopeless case I was an empty place If not for grace Where would I be? You only know I'm glad you see A hopeless case, an empty place, if not for grace. All across this room, could you just slip your hands up Where to the Lord? Would I be? Where would any of us be without you the power, the love, know. the grace of Jesus? I'm glad you see. I thank you, Jesus, for being there for me. Lord, you've been a shelter in the storms of life, a shield surrounding me. And I thank you for the mercy you Come on, somebody, let this be your anthem today. And I know you could have walked away, but you stayed a thousand times. Tell him, Jesus, I need your mercy. I need your grace. I need your power in my life every day. Hallelujah. If not for grace. For grace. Could we just love on Jesus for a minute right now? Thank you, Sister Michelle, so much. Just love on him a minute. His power is here so strong. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Thank you so much. Once I was admitted to the hospital on Friday of that week, I was mostly out of it. 
we went to the ER on Wednesday and they sent us back home with some pain medicine. I didn't have fever yet. I wasn't the nauseated sick yet. I was just hurting so bad. Sent me home on Wednesday, but on Friday, my wife walked in the room. Somehow out of my mind, I'd fallen to the floor. Had 106 fever. Her and my daughter carried me to the vehicle to ER. And for about the next four to five days, I was out of it. I, I had some awareness, but I was mostly out of it. People that would talk to me, the only way I can describe it, it's like, looking through a 10 or 12 foot pipe and, and I could see their face at the end. It was like I was looking through a tunnel, seeing people and I could hear some of what was going on. And all I knew is it was very serious. They didn't have a diagnosis with West Nile. 80% of the people that get bitten by an infected mosquito have no symptoms. Their immune system fights it off. 19% get sick but their immune system fights it off and it's never identified. 1%, it goes to extremely serious symptoms, dangerous symptoms, and that was the percent that I fell into. But West Nile is not diagnosed without a spinal tap, and they do to cultures, and it takes three or four days to get it back. And so I was ravaging, my body was ravaging with sickness, but we had no diagnosis. And very scary days and they ran antibiotics four different antibiotics hoping to hit whatever sickness I had and one antiviral medicine for those four or five days just continually just just the IV loading me up hoping that something would work and it was in one of those days helpless laying there hearing the buzz around me hearing my wife on the phone talking to our pastor and praying about whether to transfer me to a Houston or a New Orleans or somebody that might have a little bit more experience in infectious diseases and what do we do and what steps do we take. Somewhere in that condition, my heart cried out to God. And I began to let him know just how helpless I was and just how much I needed him. I, I need you, Jesus. I'm hopeless. I'm powerless to change my situation. I need you, Jesus. I'm powerless. I, I've learned one good way to approach God is to tell him, Lord, I'm as, it's as if I'm your weakest child. I have no strength to take care of this situation by myself, but I'm coming to you for your power. I can't make it without you. <coughs> and somewhere in that fog, by the way, the cough today is just sinus or allergies. It's not anything to be worried about. It's not West Nile and it's not contagious. You're all right. How many of y'all just got a revelation and you had peace in your heart come over you? How many of you just said, Lord, I, I've been wanting a miracle, but I don't know if I want that man to lay hands on me, man. I'm a, I'm a, dude, this is serious stuff. All that is is allergies. Y'all want to hear something funny? We, we, we're family and friends here. Last week, I had an ear infection and started getting a little drainage, just ear infection, and decided I better go in to the urgent care and said, let's just go see if it maybe it's part of these signs. They come back and they said, swimmer's ear. I said, are you kidding me, swimmer's ear? I ain't been swimming in six months, but I did take my first bath. I take showers, don't get worried about that. I took my first bath and that hot water felt so good, I put my head under it, so I got, I got swimmer's ear taking a bath last week. Go figure, huh? Well, I'm glad we got that settled. Any of y'all still going to let me pray for you after it's over? I had to do like something. I'll, I'll throw it at you. But in that moment where I felt so powerless to change my situation, something dawned on me and I never wanted to leave me. I need you, Jesus. Just as much on the strongest, greatest day that I will ever have as I need you on this day with meds running through my body, not knowing if I'm going to live to survive the week. I need Jesus on my best day just as much as I need him on my worst day.
I need him on my strongest day just as much as I need him on my weakest day. I'll never be strong enough to take care of it all by myself. I'll never be righteous enough. I'll never be good enough or big enough. I came out of that situation saying, God, on the best days I ever live, let me feel just like I felt. Hooked up to the IV with an unknown future in front of me. Let me every day that I live say, Jesus, I need you, Jesus. I need your grace. Where would I be without your grace? Where would I be without your help? Where would I be without your power? Where would I be without the glory and the anointing of Almighty God? Somebody clap your hands to the Lord right now. I need you. Oh, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Where would I be? So again, we made it through that stretch. West Nile virus, simple terms that I'll describe it, kind of like a fever runs its course does its damage but when it breaks it breaks like a fever and it was gone it was there it was gone and when it left it affected my body similar it wasn't a stroke but similar to a stroke they've described it to us that 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 infection is just running through your your nervous system running through your body gets in your your spinal fluid if I understand it right and and it affects every person different. For me, it was my right side. My right arm could barely move. My right leg was very, very weak. And after a couple of days, I actually could get out of bed and take a few steps with a walker. And my left side was weakened, but not nearly as weakened as my right side. We even found out later that my right lung partially paralyzed. It just affected things on the right side of my body. But the recovery, my, my West Nile broke on the same day they came back, I mean, it broke before we even knew what I had. But then they came back and the cultures came back and said, this is what you have. Incredible recovery. <coughs> I was looking at a long journey of recovery, but what was happening was amazing. And I went to the rehab hospital for 12 days and was looking at months of outpatient therapy and went home. I was home for 15 days and it was just awesome I mean I could I could walk with my cane into the kitchen I could hold on to the counter and, and get something to drink and take care of it. I could sit down at a chair and with effort I could get up myself but we went to church on Sunday my first time to go to church but on Saturday something had started shifting in my body I started having to ask my family would you give me a lift off the couch Hey, I can't quite get up. I think I'm tired today. Went to church on Sunday in a wheelchair. Tried to stand up three times and couldn't. By Wednesday, I was fully bedridden. Took everything my wife had, and actually that's when pastor came to see me. And you can attest what was happening in my body. Weird pain inside of, like, the internal parts of your leg and arm. Like, it was, I just knew something's going on. Back to the ER and the first doctor not many doctors have to deal with West Nile and and then the second disorder but they, they they said man West Nile's just been tough we're gonna send you back home we can't help you and I just want to tell y'all in that moment my wife got pretty anointed and I don't think it was the Holy Spirit she let that doctor know something was going on and this 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 is not just West Nile and so a second daughter doctor got involved and said that he was going to help us out and there's so many things I can say but I'm going to focus on what I feel the spirit leading us to say today God just spoke to us and ministered to us in such powerful powerful ways at different parts of this process but back in the hospital on a Friday and they said we're doing another spinal tap on Sunday and if one thing your proteins are in a different place then we'll be able to tell you what you have Otherwise, we'll have to do more cultures, and it'll take a few days. Man, let me just sneak in and tell you something right here. Don't expect sympathy from your wife if you have to get a spinal tap. If she's had anything when she had a baby where they stick a needle in their spine, don't, don't expect any sympathy. I was so scared. I mean, like, oh, no, spinal tap, that's scary, man. My wife's like, baby, women do it every day. It's going to be all right. What an amazing support my wife has been. But boy, in that one moment, I'm like, oh, I, I, don't, I know I better not go there. 
So on a Sunday, they did the lumbar puncture, and my doctor comes in that afternoon, and he, he, he tells me, Greg, your whatever they see, your proteins are elevated very much. And you either have something called CIDP and all four long words or Guillain Beret. I'd never heard that word. My body had begun paralyzing by the day. My arms that I could eat with, at least my left hand, all of a sudden now it barely makes it up an inch or two and it quits working. My right leg especially, I can move in an inch or two. I didn't know what was going on in that journey to this second diagnosis. I won't stay here long, but I just want to tell you about my Saturday and that Sunday before the diagnosis. I found out later not many people die from that specific issue called Guillain-Barre. Some do, but it felt like I was dying. Okay. And on that day, I gave my wife to God, my kids to God. I call it a clean the slate prayer meeting. I, I told God, if you are taking me out, let's just go ahead and get it over with. But to face that your kids might be raised without you. God, take care of my bride. Just clean the slate. Didn't know what we were facing. Didn't know what was happening. And I also want to live my life not having to be looking possible death in the face to keep my slate clean. I want to dedicate my family and my home and my children and my business and everything that I am and do. It's yours, God. I give it to you. I yield it to you. So we got this second diagnosis and ended up, they're so much similar, the CIDP or the Guillain-Barre. One's acute, happens right then, the Guillain-Barre, the CIDP is chronic, and so we claim the Guillain-Barre, and, and that's what it's been. And it, it just, just hit, hit us hard, hard but, but it's, it's not, not repeating, so we thank God for that. But the, the doctor, doctor said, and this, this is where I feel to minister for a few moments, and God's just going to bless in this house. But the doctor said the treatment gave us two options, and we prayed about it, and we chose the treatment that is called IVIG. Has anybody ever heard of a treatment called IVIG? I, I'd never heard of it. IV stands for IV intravenous, and the IG stands for immunoglobins. Now, nobody's running the aisles, but IVIG is a powerful medicine. And we, we felt that was the option to take. And so on Monday night, they decided for some reason they were going to start it at 10 p.m., this IV medicine that I would take four bags of, four doses of, Monday, Tuesday, and two on Wednesday. $10,000 a bag, very expensive stuff. Found out through research later that IVIG is made by taking blood from thousands of donors, the blood plasma from thousands of donors, and they process it. And I'm just going, I've just studied a little bit. I'm not a medical professional, but they process this blood to where from thousands of blood donors, they take the immunoglobins, which is the immunity parts of the blood, the antibodies, and thousands of healthy blood donors' blood is processed together to make one bag of IVIG. So over the next three days, I was going to have, oh my goodness, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let's take a time out and pray because God's going to minister in this room in the next 10 minutes. Would you do that? Amen. I know we laughed a bit, had a little fun, but let's tune into the spirit right now. I'm praying the miraculous. I'm praying the supernatural. I'm praying the power of Almighty God in this room. Everything that God wants to say. Everything that God wants to do in these next few moments. Everything that God wants to minister and speak in your lives. Hallelujah. 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 If you're considering baptism, God's going to open that door in your spirit today. If you need the Holy Ghost or renewing of the Holy Ghost, God can release that in this atmosphere. It's here. You need healing in your body. The Holy Spirit releases that into this atmosphere. Would you lift your hands in faith across this room right now? 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So what was about to happen on Monday night, October the 9th? I'm a month and a week into my story now. Amen. On Monday night, October the 9th, began this IVIG treatment where being infused into my body was the antibodies, the immunity cells, the parts of the blood that helps fight infection and help get my immune system back in the right place. That happened on October 9th, 10th, and 11th. But I've looked back at the story and realized that on Sunday night, October the 8th, and then on Tuesday, October the 10th, God said, I got my own IVIG system that I'm going to put in your body and I'm going to put in your spirit. Amen. Amen. On Sunday afternoon, again, that was the day we got this second diagnosis. I was vulnerable to it by having West Nile, but it's a total different situation. And on that Sunday night, my pastor knew we were in a tough place and he knew that we were looking At a second diagnosis, my wife had texted him. And so Sunday night at the Pentecostals of Alexandria, and they live streamed their services. So uh, my wife said she needed to go to church. And so uh, a friend of mine, Davin, he sat at the hospital with me. And on the little hospital tray on Sunday night, we had my laptop open and we had church playing. And, and, And it was one of those services that went two songs and everybody came up front and were praying. And, and so we turned the volume down and we were just talking a little bit while they were praying. But all of a sudden, I heard my name. And he hurried up and turned the volume up. And Pastor Anthony Mangan said, Greg Albritton's in a tough place right now. They've just received a second diagnosis and things don't look real good for Greg right now. Church, I need you to pray. I was laying flat on my back in a hospital bed, but all of a sudden I could move my arms a little bit. I stuck my hand barely out the rails of the bed. Davin reached over and grabbed my hand. God said, my IVIG is about to start. Amen. I've got hundreds of people praying for you right now. I've got spirit being transferred right now I've got something being infused in your life in your spirit and body something being imparted by the power of the Holy Ghost and when my pastor began to pray and my church my home church began to pray for the next hour I I just kept my hand holding my friend's hand and we began to pray the Holy Ghost came in that room the power of God came in that place so strong I don't know what the nurses thought when they came in for treatment, whatever they came in to do. We slowed down for a minute. Soon as they left, we took off praying again. It seemed like five minutes, but it was almost an hour. Amen. From when I heard pastor say my name, all of a sudden I looked up and here he is walking in the door. He walked in and if you know Brother Megan, you know he feels something, he's just going to act on it. He walked in, he said, oh my goodness, I came to take authority, but it's already been done. Something's in this room. He pulled out oil and he began to pray over me. We prayed for a little while, and he had a person that had driven him, so he said, they're waiting at the front door for me. I got to go. He turned to leave, and as he was turning to leave, in the door walked my wife, my kids, my sister, and and four or five people from the church. Pastor said, come on in. It's already happening. We started praying, people laying hands on me, my wife. God's spirit filled that room. I still remember powerful as God was I was, I was worried because one brother in that room he, he wasn't just praying for me he decided to pray for the whole floor boy he was loud I was like God everybody on this floor going to get a miracle and they left and I told my wife I said my body hadn't changed I'm going I'm to impart a, a, a principle a divine principle to somebody right now But when my wife, and when everybody left and just my wife was there, I said, my body hadn't changed yet. But something just shifted in the spirit realm. Something just changed in the spirit realm. Anybody ever heard that verse, we are to pray in earth? 
in earth as it is in heaven let me tell you something when it happens in the heavens it's going to come to pass on earth when you feel it shift in the spirit of almighty god you claim it amen i said my body hadn't changed but something's going to happen monday actually was a really tough day the symptoms seemed they didn't seem to they got worse a nauseous came i couldn't hardly move my eyes were sensitive no light my ears no noise it was a tough day on Monday night, they started the IVIG. But text had been going around the entire country. That October 10th, Tuesday, it had been set a week earlier. It's a day of prayer and fasting for Greg Albright. And God said, they're giving you four doses of IVIG. I got some of my own IVIG. Hey, man, we brought prayer right to your room on Sunday night and on Tuesday. You were all a part of it, and thank you so much. But on Tuesday, men and ladies of God and families and people across this country said, God, touch Greg Albright right now. And from all over this country, hey, man, there were prayers and there were words of faith and there were fastings that took place. The report said, about the medicine IVIG that is supposed to take several days to four weeks to see its effects not mine on Tuesday the nausea was gone on Tuesday the eyes didn't hurt on Tuesday I could handle noise on Tuesday I didn't have any strength back but the weird pain inside of my body was completely it left it was gone and I told my wife I'm not afraid of therapy I'm gonna have to work to gain my strength back but something has changed hallelujah Hallelujah. Something has changed. God's IVIG. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to have people praying over you. I'm going to have people calling on my name over you. I'm going to have people speaking faith over you. Mm. And God's IVIG is going to work in this room today. What do you mean, Brother Greg? The gift comes from God. You remember where Paul told Timothy, don't forget, stir up the gift that is in you by what? The laying on of hands. The gift didn't come from any hands. The gift came from who? But there's something about God's people praying. There's something about somebody that's already been through a trial saying, I speak faith over you right now in Jesus' name. I don't know how it all happens, but when God's people began to pray, when people of faith began to call on God's name, when people began to extend their faith, God says, the healing comes from me, but I'm going to use that man down the road praying for you right now. I'm going to use a church calling on the name of Almighty God to bring anointing into your life. So we'll come back to that in, in just, just a moment. Still had a few things to go through. I came out of that, went back to rehab hospital, then experienced a strong pain in my side that ended up being a, a blood clot from my leg. It broke off, went into my lung, had a, a blocked artery in my right lung. Just a journey. It's been a journey. And my last doctor told me, he said, your first situation made you susceptible to the second one. You were bedridden, made you susceptible to blood clots. Boy, God used a doctor. I didn't know he was a man of faith. I just thought he was my doctor. And he looked at me, he said, I speak encouragement to you right now. He said, he said, the first one made you susceptible to the second one, made you second, uh, susceptible to the third one. But I speak right now, that part's over and you're gonna recover in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we did. Went back to recovery. Been working for the last few months to gain my strength back. And I had major dynamic shifts where God's power flows. Let me give those of you that are believing God for healings in your life and your family, works in the spirit. I believe there are two types of miracles. There may be many types, but, but to me, it's just the way I describe it. And they're both powerful. There are instantaneous miracles where it happens like that. Or there's stories like mine where I call them layer miracles. Where layer at a time, Almighty God gives you a shift and another shift and another divine visitation. And when you turn around and look at it, 
you're able to say, I got my miracle. God did a work in my life. God did a work in my life. So if you're one that it happens all at one time, let it happen. Or if you're one of the ones that God works in layers and you're able to look back and say, look what the Lord has done. Would you stand with me right now? Close your eyes across this room and let's just lift our hands to the Lord and worship him for a moment right now. God, I give you glory, Jesus. Would you lift your hands to the Lord right now? God, I give you glory, Jesus. God, I give you praise all across this room. Lord, there are precious families here today from this church and from this community with needs in their life, with needs in their body, with needs in their home. And Jesus, you are the God of all power. You are the God of all glory that meets with us today, meets with these families today. Church, would you lift your voices for a moment right now across this room? Would you lift your spirits to the Lord right now? Our God is so able. Our God is so mighty. Our God is so strong. In the name of Jesus, 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 our God is so precious. Our God is so powerful. Hallelujah, dear Jesus. Hallelujah, dear Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you just join me and just, if you feel to lift your hands or clap your hands, I just want us to set the atmosphere one more moment for what God will do in this room. Hallelujah, dear Jesus. You're able, Jesus. You're able, Jesus. You're in this house, Jesus. Here's what I'd like to request in this room right now. There are multitudes of needs. Some physical sickness ministry team, if you'll begin coming. Some that are physical needs of healing. Some may be a work of God in your family, and I've seen beautiful works happen in families. God heal marriages, strengthen homes. The one brother that testified said he'd been through some challenges financially while he walked through his sickness. I'm praying there's those that need that, that God will open that door. But you have a need, the miracle power of Jesus in this room. You have a need. We're just going to take a moment. We're not going to be in a big hurry right now. If you, you have a need, you're a member of this church or you came with a friend today, we're all family here today. We're all children of God in this house loving our Jesus. Some are coming right now. Would you begin coming from across this room? I'm not going to label your need. You may be the longest standing member of this church or this may be your first Sunday. You have a need in your life. That's a miracle. What do I mean by that? That means I can't do it by my own strength. I don't know how to get it done. There's physical needs here. There's family needs here. I, God's, God's IVIG is about to work. Just keep coming if you don't mind coming and standing. That's it. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Anybody else? Just come. You may be like Christine, preacher. I just need the Holy Ghost to touch me today. I need something from heaven today. Would you come? I, I'm not going to get in a hurry right now because I, I felt all week long God wants to do something in this room. And make sure, those of you coming by the aisles right there, make sure those behind you have a little bit of room to still get through. Anybody else? I really felt not to get in a hurry when I got to this point because some may have to think for a minute. If you need the Holy Ghost or renewing, I want you to come. If you need to be baptized today, I want you to come. You want to be baptized. If you need any part of your life, you have a need for a miracle, would you come? Now, church, here's how God's IVIG is about to work. The rest of us in this room, some are already doing it. I would like for everyone that's standing up here that has a need to have one or two people pointing towards them or touching them. Amen. I don't know how all impartation works, 
but if they can put other people's blood immunity in my body to help me recover, amen, on the same days that God was having hundreds of people pray over my life, and God said, by my spirit, I'm going to use the prayers of the saints. I'm going to use the faith of the saint to help transfer it to you. Would somebody with faith in this room help transfer it right now? Those of you in the crowd that have faith, come and stand by somebody. That's it. Ministry team, stand by somebody right now. Help transfer faith in this room. Help transfer faith in this room. Help the name of Jesus be imparted in somebody's life. Help the power of Jesus.